Welcome. Now in this module, let's take a look at clauses 7, 8, 9, and 10, uh, which are also part of the mandatory section or the mandatory essential requirements right in the beginning of the ISMS standard. So let's take a look. Now this is the structure of the mandatory clauses of ISMS 27001. We already talked about clauses 4, 5, and 6 in the previous module. In this module, we'll talk about support, operation, performance evaluation, and improvement sections, clauses 7, 8, 9, and 10. Now, talking about support, so support refers to the organization should provide the resources necessary for the establishment, implementation, maintenance, and continual improvement of the ISMS. And, and that's related to, the, to supporting so that the resources are available. And then ensuring the competence of the staff for the ISMS. So this is, these are support functions. The resources should be available and they should be competent. And then awareness related to the policy and ISMS will be ensured among the staff. So this is placed as an essential mandatory requirement. And we also find that awareness uh, training is, is another clause in the uh, other section. In the, um, in the discretionary control section of ISMS 27001 as well. And then there's communication part of support, which is communication mechanisms related to ISMS internal and external to the organization. So whenever there's communication required, we should know and it should be, it should be organized how it will be communicated related to ISMS, both internal and internal issue, uh, external issues. Now, moving on with support, we talk about documentation with appropriate identification, description, format, review, and approval mechanism, because the entire ISMS is going to consist of a lot of documentation and a lot of records, and these are uh, documents which are part of the ISMS because they are required in the form of SOPs and policy and checklist, but these are also auditable records. And these are records which drive the processes as well because senior management will require the documents or the checklist and will require it to sign off. And for example, change management, it's a process and there needs to be some documentation in order to drive that process. And then for documentation, there needs to be change control protection, which is protecting from, uh, from loss or damage or theft. And then distribution, how will this be distributed? Will it be put up on the organizational web portal, for example? Retention, how long do you retain these documents? Um, and do we have the resources necessary to retain them? And disposal, when do you discard this information? Now, operations is clause number eight. And operations refers to plan, implement, and control the processes. So uh, we're referring here to processes, and obviously we're going to embed the ISMS controls into the processes. And then control planned changes. Whenever there's uh, a change, we're referring to change management here. And then outsourced processes should be controlled as well. Whenever there's a third party or a contractor and there are processes involved, we need to address those as well. And then risk assessment and risk treatment and retain the documented information, all part of operations. Um, and, and we're mentioning that risk is also part of operations and we need to look at risk within operations. Now, performance evaluation is a very important duty um, of the management, and we're referring here in clause number nine to performance evaluation, monitoring, measurement, analysis, and evaluation of the ISMS. Um, all of those factors, how is it actually going? Uh, how are we going to measure it? Um, who is going to measure it? What frequency are we going to measure the performance of the ISMS? And then what needs to be monitored? What are the methods for monitoring? Who will monitor? When to monitor? Who shall analyze and evaluate the results? And we could be monitoring, for example, the uh, incidents, um, or we could be monitoring, for example, the vulnerability management results, or we could be monitoring different dashboards and uh, KPIs, uh, for example, the uh, antivirus tool, and how many stations in the entire organization have an updated antivirus and how many do not. And then moving on with performance evaluation, there's a very important part of performance evaluation, which is the internal audit program. So the internal audit should be implemented 
at planned intervals as an organized process. And then you define audit criteria and scope for each audit and the reporting of auditing results and retaining the auditing documents. So auditing is a, is a, is a core mandatory process and we need to organize that as part of performance evaluation. And continuing with management review, um, uh, planned intervals for management review. We look at status of the actions for management review of the entire ISMS. Um, has anything changed? Were there any action items from the previous management review? Um, have there been any changes in the external and internal environment which force us to have a relook and to examine that what are the information security impacts and to review non-conformities and corrective actions monitoring and measurement results, audit reports, and other aspects as well. And then finally, we have clause number 10, part of the mandatory section of ISMS, which talks about non-conformities and corrective action. So that's a cycle in which there's a continuous improvement and continual improvement of the entire ISMS as an ongoing activity. So these were the 10 uh, clauses, uh, part of the mandatory section, which we looked at. And in the next module, We'll, we'll look at the discretionary controls and the actual um, appendix of the ISMS, which has about 114 controls in uh, 35 control objectives. Let's have a look at that in the next module. Thank you.